SOLIDWORKS 2024 introduces several great enhancements for parts and features. And one feature that should get everybody excited right off the bat is the ability to save a file to an older version. Now when you use the save as command, you'll be able to go in here and specify if you want to save the file to SOLIDWORKS 2023 or SOLIDWORKS 2022. When you perform the save and then open the file in an older version, what you're going to see is that you not only have the full feature tree, but you also have the ability to make changes and save your edits so that you can actually convey these changes back to the previous version of SOLIDWORKS that it was created in. And this should make it a lot more efficient when collaborating across several versions of SOLIDWORKS, whether internally or externally with vendors and customers. When we made this part, we made it using a Revolve Cut. So if we jump back to kind of a previous version here, we're going to see that there are new options for creating Revolve Cuts in SOLIDWORKS. Now in 2024, when you create a Revolve Cut, you'll have the option to flip side to cut. And this means that you can use your sketch profile to remove material that's found on the inside of that profile or on the outside, giving you more flexibility for using sketches when creating your Revolve Cuts. Now because this part is mostly axisymmetric, uh, we're probably going to make it on a lathe by just turning down some existing stock. And it'd be really useful to know what size stock we need to order so that we can manufacture these parts. We'll go up to Reference Geometry and select the option for a bounding box, and now in 2024 we have the ability to specify a cylindrical bounding box. When we do that, we might need to adjust the orientation of this bounding box, so we have the option to also use a custom plane that allows us to create a bounding box perpendicular to a face we have selected, and it's now really easy for the cylindrical parts uh, to be um, captured with a bounding box so that we can go ahead and get that material on order. Now another part that we need to work on is the crank arm for this pedal assembly. If we open up the crank arm, we'll see that we've got a, uh, an existing set of cuts that have removed material, but maybe we want to explore a different design. If we look at an alternative design, what we've got are a couple of triangular cuts that pass all the way through our part, and I'd actually like to pattern these symmetrically out to the left and the right. I'm going to go ahead and use a linear pattern, and just like always, I will select a reference plane to control the direction of this pattern. And then I'll also go ahead and select my features that I want to pattern. Typically, if we wanted to pattern in both directions symmetrically, we'd specify our spacing and instances for direction one, and then we would repeat that process under direction two and likely use the pattern seed only checkbox. Now in SOLIDWORKS 2024, there's one checkbox to create a symmetric pattern. So after you've specified your parameters for direction one, just check the symmetric option under direction two, and you now have a symmetric pattern that goes equally in both directions. So really, really efficient. Now if we wanted to manufacture this using injection molding, we'd likely have to go and create some uh, geometry that will help us create the tooling. Here what we're going to do is create a quick offset surface with a zero offset, and that'll just give us a copy of this existing face. And what I want to do is create shutoff surfaces for all those triangular cuts that pass through this part. A quick way to do this in SOLIDWORKS 2024 is the untrimmed surface command. We'll just select that existing face, and then we'll make sure to select the option to exclude the parent surface. And that essentially gives us a negative of the face we had selected, or in this case, it gives us all of those triangular shutoff surfaces with just a couple clicks, and we don't have to create each one individually. Another part we need to modify is the mounting plate for our transmission. And what we'd like to do here is actually lay out uh, kind of some reference geometry that we'll use to create holes uh, for mounting this bracket. So to start out with, we're just going to lay out some really simple geometry um, where the four corners of this rectangle will kind of represent where we'd like to place the center point for a few holes. With sketching in SOLIDWORKS 2024, you're going to have some new options. And one that's really, really powerful is the ability to just select any sketch entity and instantly have a dimension pop out that you can go ahead and double click to edit. So essentially this dimension is temporary until you go in and actually modify its value at which point it becomes a traditional dimension. And this works as well not with just singular sketch entities but if you control select multiple sketch entities you can also create something like an angle dimension like we see here. This functionality doesn't interfere with any of our standard um, selection tools. So if I were to go in and control select a couple of lines, I still have my I still have my standard pop-up toolbar that would allow me to create an equal dimension. 
Now, once I've got this sketch laid out, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and use the hole wizard feature to add in a couple of countersunk holes. And these holes, like I said, are just gonna be countersunk. There'll be a flathead screw, and then we'll do, let's say like an M6 that goes uh, through all. Once we've specified the size of our hole, what we need to do is jump over to the positions tab where you'll find a new option to use an existing 2D sketch to place your hole instances. Here I'll just go ahead and select this existing rectangle that we created, and it actually picks up the endpoints of sketch entities. So you don't have to have just a sketch point that you've dropped in to represent the whole center. You can pick up on the endpoints of existing sketches. In our case, we actually only need three of these holes. We don't need all four. So what we're able to do is go in and choose the instances to skip option and just skip over this corner down here in the bottom left. Now we're able to use that existing sketch to quickly uh, reference data that we've already created in order to create instances for our whole wizard. Let's look at one last great enhancement for SolidWorks 2024 in parts. Here we've got this assembly that we need to do some additional work for to create a fixture that's gonna hold it in place while we weld these stainless tubes together. Now, there's kind of a couple of challenges here that we're gonna have to tackle. Because this is an assembly, uh, we don't have the option to create a physical uh, fillet weld bead that would let us uh, accurately capture the weight of our part if we were to weld these components together. And if we want to create these fixture components, uh, it might be a little bit more difficult to do at the assembly level rather than at the part level. So while we could do some of this work at the assembly level, the other option would typically be that we might save this assembly as a part. But the downside there is that it actually breaks the link to the assembly and gives us just a bunch of imported geometry back at the part level. So new in SOLIDWORKS 2024 is the ability to save a, uh, an assembly as a multi-body part. So if we choose make multi-body part and specify our template, what we're gonna get here is some options for importing things like surface bodies, coordinate systems, materials. And then we also have the option to break or keep the link to the original assembly. In this case, we'll go ahead and keep that link to the original assembly. If we look at the feature tree here, we can see that we've got a, uh, an item in the tree that says make multi-body part. And then it's got individual folders for surface bodies and solid bodies. If we look at each solid body, we can actually see that the material has also come across with it. So that gives us a lot of options here for now creating physical weld beads. If we wanted to put a weld bead around each uh, intersection here, where we've got the tubes joining. We could go from there to actually calculate the mass properties of all of these parts together and get an accurate representation. Now, the big benefit here is that once we've created this multi-body part, there's still a link back to the original assembly. So what that means for us is if we make changes to the original assembly, we'll actually see those changes propagate back to the part level. So maybe we wanna go in here and adjust uh, the position of some of these tubes. Well, we could just modify that existing sketch, move some of these components around, maybe adjust their spacing a little bit. And then once we've rebuilt the assembly, we'll actually see those changes back here at the part level and the tubes will update uh, to reflect their new position. So a much more parallel process here when working with uh, a multi-body part that is linked kind of in real time to the original assembly. And that would allow us to just work on these fixtures while maybe we're still fine tuning the original design for the placement and position of each component. Now, since we're talking about fixturing, uh, when we saw these uh, new enhancements and started playing around with these feature sets, we decided that it might be cool to actually design and print our own fixture. And so what we did was we actually took this multi-body part and we uh, modified it a little bit uh, to create our own fixture that we are going to print out on our form labs or our Mark Forge printer. And so you can see here that we were able to take uh, kind of that same technique that we just illustrated to create a multi-body part from our assembly and then create our own fixture jig that we'll print and uh, actually use to maybe weld up or, or just kind of mock up a similar design. So a lot of cool things that we were able to take advantage of with our, uh, our manufacturing capabilities and our additive manufacturing solutions, and hopefully a lot of features that you guys can take back as well to incorporate into your own processes.